Hey everyone, I want to do a quick video on this uh, Furman surge protector, or power conditioner as it's usually called from manufacturers. So I picked this one up in an uh, auction of uh, some other gear that I that I purchased. It was in the rack, which is nice, because uh, these are pretty expensive. You know, they're several hundred dollars new, even used, they usually fetch over a hundred. And, you know, getting one basically for free was, was awesome. So this particular one I want to talk about, because I have it on the bench here, because I believe there's something wrong with it. Um, Typically, the, the surge protection, the actual, the mobs in here that do the surge protection go bad, and I think that's the case of this, because when I plug it in, the protection okay light's not going on. While I have this open, I just think it would be kind of a neat, uh, just a quick little video here to talk about surge protectors like this, or line filters, power conditioners, and um, kind of discuss what they actually are. Because looking at the specs of these and looking at the marketing material of these and the manufacturers put out, they're a little overhyped, in my opinion, for what they actually do versus what's inside here. Again, I haven't I haven't looked inside to see what's in here, but you know, it, it, there's not going to be much. It's it's going to be kind of comical, is my guess, when you actually open and figure out what's there. So this particular unit's pretty nice. It's made by Furman, which is a pretty well-known manufacturer of these uh, power conditioners, and at least in the audio field for you know all sorts of um, rack equipment, DJ equipment, things like that. You see this all the time, and this model is the PM Pro. Uh, this is an older model they don't make anymore. There's actually a PM Pro Series 2 that they made, which has also been discontinued now at this point, I believe. Um, they have multiple other series that all kind of do the same thing. Essentially what this unit is, is it's a surge protector, is its primary goal. And then secondary goals, it's got some line filtering uh, inside it, which we'll talk about once I open it. Uh, on the front here, it's got a 20 amp breaker, which is nice. And then you've got uh, LED bar graphs, both for your line voltage in volts and then your uh, current draw on this which is actually pretty nice so line voltage uh you know for here us power in 120 volt on split phase system you know typically you have around 117 is what they say i'm usually here at my house around 120 volts and then current on this unit is rated at 20 amps when you derate that you know 80 percent or you know 20 percent overhead or whatever brings you to 16 which is where this you know the old light ends up on this bar graph here but it is nice that it has the current monitoring built in so on the front, you got a single little unswitched outlet. And then on the back, you've got eight uh, switched outlets from the breaker on the front that you know, the unit could, in certain conditions of overpower and stuff like that can turn all these off as well, or over voltage, I should say. Uh, these uh, outlets in the back are just standard, you know, 120 volt, 20 amp home outlets that you could buy at Home Depot, essentially. And you got four of them in here stacked up. So, I mean, all the manufacturers do this. It's, it's, it's just typically what you see because it's a cheap way of doing it. Um, the case itself is metal, which is good. You know, no plastic, keeps it safe. Um, it's got a really heavy-duty, nice power cord. On the end, it looks like someone shortened it. They've got a replacement end on there, which, you know, no big deal. Uh, probably just open it and just make sure that, you know, the screw terminals on there are safe in terms of, you know, how they put that on. But I'll plug it in real quick. It does a little dance there as it powers up. And then you can see it, um, you know, displays your current AC voltage going in there. So ground okay. I've actually got this plugged into an outlet, not my Variac, because the Variac actually lifts the ground so that wouldn't be lit plugged into there. And then you notice the protection okay light is not on, which clues me in that this is probably taking a hit. And it's probably either got some blown fuses or blown mobs or, or possibly, you know, both inside. So we'll take a look once we open it up. Uh, the 20 amp breaker here, this runs all the back outlets. Uh, so it kind of gives you just a, a you know, power switch to turn it on and off in terms of the back there. But uh, there is no guard on this breaker too, and it is pretty touchy. So that's one thing I noticed in the Series 2 model they changed. They've got a guard over this to protect it. So these devices basically do three things. Number one, they are basically overload protection. That's your circuit breaker on the front. Uh, some of these are fused. I don't think this one is because it has the breaker right there. So number two, they do surge protection. So your surge protection will consist of multiple things. Typically it'll just be your mobs, your metal oxide varistors. Uh, beyond that, they might have some spark gaps. If there's any circuit boards in there, they might have some gas just discharge tubes. They might have some uh, TBS diodes. So uh, just depending on you know the amount of money put in there and what they do, you may find a combination or all of those. So we'll have to take a look once I open it. Uh, number three is line filtering. So in terms of line filtering, you're just trying to get rid of noise from the power line coming into, you know, the equipment that's plugged into this, essentially. So all your gear that's plugged into this is going to have basic line filtering anyway, which usually consists of a common load choke and then some uh, filtering di or uh, filtering capacitors. And all that is in your equipment for two reasons. Number one, 
it's trying to keep any noise again from the power line from getting into your equipment causing erratic operation but number two usually it's part of the uh, compliance in terms of FCC or CE or whatever compliance may be out there in terms of keeping um, noise from the actual device itself from going back out into the power line so that's actually one of the main reasons why you see that that you know simple uh, noise filtering on the power supplies of pretty much all your electronic gear. So this will have additional line filtering built into it. Um, usually it's just made up of, like I said, it'll have a common mode choke in there. Um, there might be differential chokes as well to get rid of any common mode differential noise. It'll have capacitors, probably X class and Y class capacitors across the, you know, across between neutral ground and hot. And then you might find some other um, capacitors in there too, or some other chokes as well, depending on what it is. Because this is so high current, uh, the chokes that you need for the combo chokes and stuff like that have to be high current as well to handle this. So I know on a lot of power conditioners, when you look uh, for the actual high, you know, high current lines on, on the back, it'll have different jacks labeled for different things. Uh, you see this in a lot of home theater equipment too. And the ones labeled for the amplifier typically won't go through those, those uh, common mode chokes because to get a common, mode, a common mode choke that can handle you know, 10 or more amps, usually it starts getting pretty expensive. So just open it here real quick. And as I expected, it's oops, drop that. It's pretty empty, so not a whole lot going on in there. And again, if you read the marketing material for these things, you know they're they're you know years spent designing you know the the surge protection circuitry in here and everything else. So let me get a better camera angle so we can talk about this real quick. All right, here's a better look inside the the Furman PM Pro. So I'll talk about the different components in here as far as what's going on in terms of the power path that goes through this unit. So uh, right away, a power comes in. This is your hot rate here. It goes to this vice. This is basically just a uh, switch. It's not solid state. It's actually like a relay in there. I can hear it click when I power it on. And this is controlled by some of the logic over here that's your overload protection. So when it sees power beyond a certain point, it you know you see the wires coming off that back to here and it fires this relay and turns off and kills power to the back jacks there so that's all that's doing uh, besides that you come up here you got that uh, breaker the 20 amp breaker right in the front you can see it's right across the hot as well before going back to the row of uh, outlets back there uh, there's the unswitched outlet here which ties back and goes you know, somehow it's tied directly to the the hot neutral there bypassing the switch and stuff there uh, this first board here you've got uh, a couple of fuses on there and you've got your mobs and there's actually three of them here so those are your surge protectors essentially. So what these do is they're rated for certain clamping voltage. And what that voltage means is that when the, the voltage across, you know, across both pins on it reaches or exceeds a certain point, it goes high impedance. And at that point, it basically clamps the voltage down, you know, kind of absorbing that surge. And these have a limited lifespan. You know, they can only take so many hits. And after they take so many hits, that's when they essentially blow and they fail. And when they blow, they usually blow open. They typically don't blow, uh, you know, short. But if they do, that's why you've also got these fuses right here. So um, to protect the circuitry in terms of, you know, ideally not blowing the whole breaker. So with these gone, the unit will still function. You just don't have surge protection. And that's the case of mine, I believe. You can see there's some sense wires coming off this board here. And I believe that's why I don't have that uh, protection OK LED lit up on the front there because the sense on there is not actually working. And actually, I see one of them blown down in there. I'll have to get a better picture of that. It's the one buried in the bottom, but there's a little bit charred area right in the bottom of the of the case there. So, oh, look at this over here too. There's another one. So this guy's split right in half. So I'll get a better picture of that. So you got a second board over here too that's got three more mods. So they're doing it correctly. They've got three because they've got you know between each uh, wire on there. So you got ground neutral, neutral to hot, and hot to ground. So you're covering basically all you know all. All places a surge could come in this unit in terms of protection. And this board also has a uh, gas discharge tube on it, which is that guy right there, which is nice. So, you know, there's decent surge protection in here, but again, uh, that's your, you know, failure point right there, that guy and that guy. So at that point, when you see, you know, one of them's taking a hit, you know, on these units, just replace all of them. You know, you don't know, even though it was probably, whatever that might be hot, I'm not sure, whichever one was actually, you know, took the surge uh, in cases, both of them here. Uh, just replace all of them. They're really inexpensive, and there's no reason not to. So that explains why my uh, my light's off there. I'm curious about these fuses, too, if they're actually good. 
That one looks okay. Not the bottom one. That's blown. Yeah, that one's blown. There we go. So, I'll replace those as well. Uh, besides that, the only other thing really in here is your line filter, which is this guy here. And they're just using an off-the-shelf line filter. Uh, nothing special about it whatsoever. Uh, you can, you know, buy these from any supplier. And if you look at the actual circuit on there, it's upside down. But uh, that's exactly what I said. So you've got a choke on here between these two. And then you've got a capacitor between hot and neutral. And then you've got another capacitor here. Nope, two, there's two capacitors there. So you've got two capacitors between hot and ground which they're not using the ground tab, it looks like it's soldered the connector here, so just using the ground of the chassis there between hot and neutral. So the capacitor going across neutral and hot, that's an X-class capacitor. Uh, the reason why, and these, well, I'll say that these are Y-class capacitors here that go between ground. So the X-class ones are there basically designed so when they fail, they could either fail in two modes. They can fail open or they can fail short. If they fail open, fine, you lose the filtering capability of that cap across there. If they fail short, they basically, you know, it's bad. You're, you got a short across around the neutral and hopefully your breaker will take it at that point, you know, and, and power the unit down. The Y-class ones are a little bit more critical because they tie ground to either hot or neutral. So if say the one between hot and ground fails and it fails closed, you know, your whole chassis can be hot, can become hot at that point, which, you know, is a, is a shock hazard. So these are produced with extra caution. So they should only ever fail open. And that's why, you know, they have those specific classes for the capacitors, you know, in these devices. But you see all gear has those caps, too. Um, they're your famous reefas that you have people strangely, like, obsessed with right now in terms of them, you know, failing. But they're super old and old gear, and that's why you see them that way. But those are X and Y class capacitors. So that's the line filter, and that's all it's doing. So this is suppressing noise. The whole purpose of these is just to be basically a low-pass filter. You want your 60 hertz AC to get through, but anything, you know, generally above 60 hertz, you want to start filtering out. And these usually are, are good up to, you know, several hundred kilohertz, I believe, in terms of no noise filtration going through the unit. So besides that, you just have a simple board up here that's got some logic on it uh, that's basically doing the voltage detection, you know, measurement to light up your LEDs on here. And then you got the same for the current here. Oh, and here's a shunt. So this is how they're doing their current. I thought there might be a current transformer in here, but they're just doing a shunt right on this board. So we've got a shunt right there. You can see a little bent piece of wire coming up here. And that's how they're actually measuring current. So they're measuring the resistance across that, that you know, thick wire, basically. It's the same way most of your, you know, digital multimeters measure current and stuff like that. So, and, you know, I'm not sure what these chips are here, but LM3914, that's an LED uh, driver, basically a, a bar graph driver, which is what they're using to drive the current there. So it's probably just an op amp and a simple circuit looking at the, uh, the uh, shunt right there. And you'll notice it says line volts uh, present on this board. So, you know, the, you got, you know, full hot 120 volts crossing here and probably over here too for the voltage portion of it, you know. So be careful if you're ever working on these while they're open or plugged in, I should say. Overall, build quality is good. You know, the guys zip ties holding everything together. And most of these wires, a couple of them are stranded. But most are just solid copper, you can see back there. So they're just using standard, you know, wire like out of Romex for your, for your home wiring. And interestingly, they're using the push connectors on the uh, outlets back here. They don't actually have them clamped down to the screws. I mean, which is fine. It's not like it's a bad thing, but um, probably makes construction easier at that point. So this one actually isn't. It's in there. That's a stranded wire and they got it soldered um, to put it into that uh, that push push connector. So that's it. Again, nothing nothing magically special in here. You know, just simple surge protection and a line filter. And that's all it's doing. And that's typically all you ever find in this gear. Not that it's a bad thing. You know, it's good. These are good devices in terms of, you know, protection for your gear that's plugged into them. I just think it's funny how they market them. The marketing is just like so overblown for what these are actually doing. So I don't think I have any of these mobs, so I'm going to order them. I'll probably just get them from Mouse or DigiKey, um, swap them out there, and that will get them replaced. Once they're in, I guarantee you, and I replace these two fuses too. Uh, what are these? 15 amp. So they're 15 amp fuses. So I should have some of those. Um, and that's it. I'll put it back together and should be good at that point. Anyway, just a quick little video on this Furman power conditioner. Uh, I just thought it was kind of interesting to talk about, you know, what's inside these things. So I hope that was interesting and thank you for watching.